He spent whole days in prayer, praying simply that the power of the Holy Ghost might come upon him so greatly that the Indians would not be able to refuse the gospel message. Yotonga, Anna, Wiener Kapo, my dear Native Americans, our time is so short. Oh, let us fill it up for God. Let us count the suffering of this present time as nothing. If we can but run our race and finish our course with joy, let us strive to live for God. I bless the Lord that I have nothing to do with this earth, but only to labor honestly in it for God. I think I do not desire to live one minute for anything this earth can afford, but to live for none but God till my dying moment. David Brainerd, a man that seemingly not many people know of today. Who was he? He was not one of the well-known evangelists that most evangelical Christians think of when they hear the word missions, like a Hudson Taylor, William Carey, George Whitfield, or D.L. Moody. No, Brainerd was a missionary to the Indians on the East Coast, who died at the young age of 29 years, after only a few years in active ministry, with little to no success until just before the very end of his ministry. So, what makes Brainerd noteworthy? It was his life that displays his devotion to God in the midst of great tribulations and sufferings, incredible perseverance, faith in God, commitment to God's will, and compassion for those to whom he was ministering, and that became a great inspiration to many well-known missionaries and preachers of God's word after him. He was born in 1718, lost both his parents at a young age, and thus inherited a farm at which he worked for a year when he was 19 years old. There he thought much about God, struggled with much theology, and committed his life to the ministry. He wasn't converted yet, which happened two years later, when he was 21. Soon after, he studied at Yale, where he eventually was expelled for apparently having made an unruly comment about a tutor. Brainerd was deeply disappointed, because his plans of becoming a pastor or scholar were crushed, and after several failed attempts to get back into Yale, God shifted Brainerd's ambitions to the missionary work among Indians. Brainerd was sent to the Housatonic Indians at Conomique in 1743 and preached for one year, as one can see on the poster of this exhibition. He was able to start a school for Indian children and translate some of the Psalms. Then came a reassignment to go to the Indians along the Delaware River in Pennsylvania. Brainerd preached there also for one year, but in 1745 he made his first preaching tour to the Indians at Crossweek Sung, New Jersey. This was the place where God moved greatly and brought spiritual awakening to the Indians. Within a year there were 130 persons in Brainerd's growing assembly of believers. He stayed with these Indians until he was too sick to minister, and in November 1746 he left the Indians there only to come back one more time to visit before he stayed at the house of Jonathan Edwards, where he eventually died of tuberculosis on October 9, 1747. It was a short life, 29 years, only 8 of those years as a believer, and only 4 of those as a missionary. But what is so inspiring and fascinating about Brainerd is that although he struggled with almost constant sickness, relentlessly recurring depression, loneliness, immense external hardships, lack of love for the Indians, and difficulty to stay true to his calling, 